this hero has insane potential, but how often do teams actually get to realize that potential? Hardly ever, I feel like. I, I feel like this is a hero that like 20% of the time you get to see Muerta actually carry the game, and the other 80% of the time she just loses. And that includes Team Zero, by the way, who ran this hero in multiple qualifiers. Qualifiers for EWC, qualifiers for TI, qualifiers for Wallachia. And they took their doubt. fair share of L's throughout those quals. Let I'm me tell a you. Lot of, I'm hearing a lot of doubt. But I have a lot of doubts. Let me ask you something, Austin. Okay. Do you know who the number one Morta player in the world is in terms of win rate? It's not Erica. No, I don't know who it is. That's my <laughs> point. Like, who plays this hero? That's part of the problem. You can't look to what other people are doing on it because nobody plays it. So we, we so. understand the theoretical potential of the hero. Uh-huh. But we've yet to see it come to fruition. This is another game. I mean, I respect the decision, right? Like, you, you want to play this four protect one play style with the two frontline brawlers. Muerta is a hero that can thrive in that situation. But this hero needs lockdown. It needs a lot of catch. And it needs you to hold heroes in the vicinity of her kind of immobile team fight. They do have a lot of that as well. I think this is a well structured Muerta lineup. On the flip side, the one. Whoa, 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 how so? Can you explain why it's a well-structured where to line up? Well, one, they have save and heal through the Tinker. Okay. And Boat Rum. Like, this hero needs buffs. And there's either two ways to play with Morta. You either make her a super mobile hero, which she lacks. Like, you play the Io Morta or, I don't know, Darkseer Morta, whatever. Santar, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And you get her to enemy heroes or you lock enemy heroes in a cage with her. Yeah. She will win the cage match. You have Arena to do that. You have X to do that. You have Hookshot Cogs to do that. I mean, you can't ask for much more. Yeah, you've actually got three heroes to keep one W yep. in one spot. They're going to create the cage and try and put them in there. Would you say that they anchor them in one spot? No, I would not say that, actually. I think it's more more of a, you know, hold them in a, in a vicinity type deal. No, not even for the sea captain puns. Okay. Flip side, though, is I think one dub kind of saw this idea coming and have addressed it in some, some nice ways with the displacement. The tiny and the back can both just... Isolate a target, bring them out of that sort of cage match identity, and really make the team fight difficult for Team Zero to commit into and convert on. And I think Brewmaster is another hero that is a huge backline disruptor and an interesting idea versus Tinker. We've seen a lot of Tinker this tournament. We've seen a lot of, you know, I think casual ideas versus it. But I think Brew is one of the harder, like, counters in theory if you can just toss the Tinker, catch him in a fight. He kind of just sits there and continually casts March and his shields and his roots and whatever, but if you can just toss him and then take the fight, seems pretty nice. Okay, I, I thought you were going to say the Dispel. Yeah, like, if he's going to preemptively barrier everybody, one Dispel comes through, ruins all that. Right, Brew has Tornado and Mass Dispel. They're both really good for Tinker. Sure. You can also toss up the four Protect, one Carry in this instance. If you want to throw the Morta up into the air, you remove, like, a huge chunk of the damage from this Team Zero lineup. Yeah, that's that's the always the biggest really issue nice. with Muerta, right? If she pops her ultimate and she has this very limited window to win the team fight, and one tornado could ruin that entire timing. Exactly. So I, I think the brew pick is really smart on paper here. Not a hero we see a lot, but they have all the pieces to make it work. Batrider can bring the team fight to you. Omni Knight can let your Wind Rager go in when you commit into the fight. So I think it makes a lot of sense here. Really smart drafting and I don't know. Could be a very exciting game if this goes late and both these carries find a lot of farm. They're both very dangerous with those five slots. Yeah, it's true. On low. Tori does land, but Monkushi is able to get one hit in. Not a second for the kill, Ponlo. Not your former teammate. It's able to get away. <laughs> did some research there. Huh? You feel better about that? I do. Thank you. Listen, man. <laughs> Qu Quincy Crew was like your team just because you weren't there. Just because you abandoned them for a year. I will say, uh -huh. a product of my career in this game is I have been in a lot, of, been in a lot of these TI elimination matches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't want to, but I have been here. And I will say, they, despite what it looks like, they are very stressful. Not as stressful as the Bo ones. Okay. okay. Which you know, they got rid of those after I retired. Little little sus, but <laughs> they are still very stressful, especially when you come down to these elimination games. Like you start to feel the pressure, you know. If you start to lose a team fight in that in that mid game and it's your elimination game, they'll start the thoughts start creeping in, right? Like yeah. this is the last 
fight I'm going to have at this tournament? Is this where it all ends? The laning I phase start go looking for a goes job. particularly rough. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> it, you start thinking about getting a regular 9 to 5. So my point is for Team Zero, the start here is pretty important. Well, they're going to be thinking about whether or not this was the first blood that leads Cloud into the same dominating position he was in in game one because he absolutely destroyed that first oh, yeah. game off the Beastmaster. And we talked about how the Brewmaster is pretty well positioned to counter the Muerta in this one. And already 25 and 5 in CS and has gotten the first blood. A good start for one dub. At least this game is going better for 7e. I mean, that, that is going to be the player that I think Zero are hoping has a much better time. Like, he just got completely shut down by that Invoker. They first phase banned it. I think they easily identified it was a big problem in that first game. Yeah. So, if this Mars could start to run around the map with some power runs, do what they wanted that Earth Spirit to do last time, maybe this game could be a bit faster for Team Zero and they don't find themselves in a deficit. If one dub get away with a similar type of early game they did in that game one with this kind of lineup, I think they are going to be very happy running around the map, finding the pickoffs building up some stacks for the bat or, you know, Whirlwind, Winter Ranger, which is something you have to think about as well. And just kind of playing that kind of pickoff style. Displacement into team fight is going to be very strong for them. Yeah. Six minute power rune is Illusion. Not the most useful here for either hero and should be secured for 70 if he can survive. If he can survive, a pin back onto the tiny. He does have Palm though helping him out here. Trying to give him some extra HP, oh. but it's not good enough. The toss, a crash landing. Gets the kill, but Sweet and Strong is sacrificed for it. Cherry Jr. doesn't mind, though. That was so much damage. The heal, not enough to come through. And that is Team Zero bringing both supports to mid to try and get a power rune for this Mars. And he still dies. And he used the arena, so he can't really even make a move off this or something that's cheeky. Another solid start here for one dub. I mean, they are top of the CS chart, and once more, it is Cloud leading the pack terms of net worth, he is big again. Now, there was uh, another reason that I think you like the Mars right now. You were talking to me about uh, about this yesterday. It's good for being able to lock heroes down, but there's another thing that's really good about it in this meta, right? I mean, it's the anti-ranged carry idea. Like, if you're in a ranged carry meta, Mars is kind of an anti-ranged right clicker. You just sit there with Bulwark, you redirect a lot of shots. Arena's really annoying for heroes like Lena, Marana, even Wind Ranger sometimes to deal with until you just BKB commit. I think he does have a lot of value in this meta as a hero. I mean, his win rate reflects it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so we'll see whether or not how effective that Whirlwind is going to be in these situations where Mankushi is currently putting it to use here to try and hunt down Pondlo. A toss over to try and get respect within striking range doesn't actually work out. All he's able to do is throw the Repel onto Mankushi to get him away. But no kill to be found here, perhaps one at bottom lane where Sweet and Strong, as well as Cloud, are surrounding Yes Sir, who will go down. Not getting anything out of this either because ZZQ might end up dying here. Wait, 7 e comes in, hits the pin onto Respect, managed to get that kill, and uh, Cheer Jr. is gonna find that the Mars is too tanky to do much. All those rotations top end up leaving the Morta alone. One creep off level six. No hope in that one on two. And once more, I think one dub mostly happy with that exchange just because the Brews continue to accelerate and they got the big worth to kill, but that exchange top was at least good for Zero here. They get a lot of XP for 7e. He gets involved in this early game, gets the eight minute power rune as well, which is a big one for this Mars. The resources are really important for this hero. Do lose your stacks, but you protect the ancient stacks at least and can start to slowly clear through them here. Yeah, upon those going to start working on it, but he's not level 6, so he can't actually do it yet. Throws out one March of the Machines to make him a little bit weaker, but there's no rearm to throw a second one. Very tough one. And this hasn't been a laney phase where the Morta has found a lot of action either. Kind of just been farm trading down here, but still in an okay position. Team Zero just want to protect their side of the map. The stacks will continue to be built up by Sweet and Strong on the side of one dub, going probably into the Whirlwind or Maybe give it to the Tiny as well. Get a faster blink here would be nice. It's pretty interesting. Twice now they fed the Kunkka some stacks. A hero that I usually feel like doesn't need the stacks because he is able to play the laning phase so efficiently most of the time. I mean, your mid's not taking it in this game. The Morta can't do it that early. Yeah, that's true. I think this situation is the only one who's clearing through them fast enough early. And you want to clear through them because you need the experience in this type of game. You need the experience in every game. 
Yeah, certainly needed for the Tinker who, you know, we were casting that game yesterday where these longer games can be very favorable for the Tinker because of the amount of farm that you can get. But we saw from one dub in game one, they played a super fast game. At some point in time, they came online and just started running over Team Zero. So what is Team Zero going to do to stop this? As the 10-minute power rune approaches, Jiro Jr. throws out the avalanche, try and stop him, but it doesn't spawn him there. 70 is going to try and make his way to the other side, but on the night, it's already there. One step ahead of him to claim an arcane rune. I will say, it feels like everything happening around mid lane for 70 in these games has just been frustrating. Yeah. Like, all these little things are just not adding up to his game being smooth, and I think one of are overall pretty happy with it. The one difference, I think, in this game from that first one is the objective taking for one dub is a lot worse. Like, this, that Beastmaster just barreled through all the objectives. They took all the Tier 1s off that first Aegis at the, around the 16-minute mark. Uh, they were clearing through Ancients. They cleared through Roshan. This lineup does not do all that as fast or smoothly. So if you're at a zero and you can defend your Tier 1s in a game like this and fight around them, you're going to be pretty happy. Particularly with the Tinker. Yes, sir, he's going to be caught in a last. So as he pops his ultimate, and doesn't really get any damage done. The Brewmaster got off his primal split, and they're going to try and surround this Muerta as best as possible. The arena, look for the protection. Erica in some trouble, plays inside the arena and fights back where he can, but Chira Jr. now jumping into this one. Couldn't add enough damage. Muerta Looks like Pablo has been able to... Oh, power shot! That's able to finish him off with the extra bit of tick damage and a shackle shot. Lock it down full 70, as well as Beyond throws out the spear. It just pushes Chira Jr. back to the back line as Mankushi will take over the team fight now and looks to chase after 7e with the urn on him. Another shackle shot coming up soon. A toss gonna be denied as the spear throws him back where he came from. And 7e is able to get out of there, but it's still two dead on the side of zero. And 1w bringing the pace that we were talking about from that game one. Five heroes at 11 minutes in, pushing in that safe lane. Honestly, that should be a good fight for Zero. Like, you're fighting under marches. It's a massive arena. You kind of dealt with the Brulians. You kept your Mortha alive, but not enough damage to cut through all the early sustain from this Omni Knight. Seeds of Serenity is getting popped down. These are some tanky brawlers in Tiny and Brew as well, especially with Repel to back them up. Cool. I feel like 70 hit a five-man spear at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen a five-man spear, but maybe that's what the tip's for. Like, you got us, bro, but none of us died, so wasn't that good. 1W, they got two kills, but immediately after that, 1-0 is able to push in mid and take that mid tower. So, as you said, the objective taking a little bit more favorable for 0 in this game. They're holding their map a bit better. Still, those tier 1 fights are going to be important, right? If you want to play this kind of Tinker Morta slow farm up type strategy and just get your four position really big holding these tier ones is really important particularly the last two that are alive to control your ancients a bit better i was about to say safe lane tower is kind of inevitable yeah right? it's sure. like a hard tower to defend i mean they wanted to fight out of that more than the tower sure it just didn't go their way one dub actually want to take these towers down like they need to be thinking about some maybe aggressive smokes with blink reveals to latch a good core take him out of the map and then convert on these tier ones, start opening up the lanes a bit more. I feel like that would is what would feel the best for them. And you're mainly looking at the Batrider blink, the tiny blink to enable that. This brew is going to be able to join any of these fights, but he needs the initiation. I mean, you can just smoke cloud behind this tier one mid and like kind of force the fight that way, but it feels a little awkward. The vessel already done. A lot of early fighting power, and we saw the dispels coming through in that fight. There were a couple shields that just instantly disappeared for Ponlo there. Yeah, and as a result. Erica did die ever so barely. Here's your tiny blink smoke reveal. Smoke on smoke. Jr. Jr. with his blink dagger. What's he going to choose to jump here? Apparently nothing. It's the avalanche completely whiffs, but ZZQ also can't really do anything by himself. He's a level six clockwork. These heroes are tanky enough to deal with a battery assault, no problem. About more than they were willing to deal with there. It does get a decent obs that I think will not get dewarded, but. Another power room contested. Another taken away from 7e. <laughs> really just not getting much love out of huh? <laughs> Like the one power rune he got was a regen, which is not a rune that you can nice. make a good fight happen. Unless you're a storm. I mean, it's been a battle of inches for 7e in this series. He's not gained a lot of them. And he's fallen short. That is true. Blink well, dagger done, though. So his options open up a lot more here. 
what do you do with this blink dagger? What's your, what's your play that you're looking for? You got a 2,000 net worth lead for one W. You have taken the mid tower, smoke up, go to the enemy safe lane. That's usually the play at this point, right? I think the wisdom rune smoke would have been really nice if you could have done it in this game, but your timings didn't line up for it. Okay. If you could smoke and find this wind ranger on the map, super happy with that. Like, you can find them on triangle and get some deep orbs out. I think it is doable in this type of game where one dub are going to be kind of splitting the lanes looking for pickoffs. Your other route is to just go on the Brewmaster because, I mean, he does have to push waves out. You're going to see him on the map. Like, Cloud's going to play tanky. He has 2200 HP. This is not the easiest hero to jump. You have to keep in mind, you know, the magic resist statuses this hero can bring to the table, particularly if he gets the haze off first. But he is the biggest target to bring down. You have some heroes that can control him and do it. It's just scary. If you don't see other heroes on the map, if you don't get lanes in, these kind of jumps are a bit spooky. And right now, if you're looking at the lanes, Team Zero are just not winning that battle. They don't see a lot. They're going to try and go for the brew down here. You're being sandwiched. Cloud. He is not going to be the target, so he's going to be good to either get out of here or use his primal split. Sweet and Strong is just trying to delay the damage, but I'm pretty sure he knows his life is forfeit. At least for now, Jira Jr. jumping in, though, catches the Tinker. Maybe just what they wanted, but he can't burst him down easy, though. Pondlo, he just gets out of there. The primal split comes in too late. He is able to toss up the Muerta, though. It's the Muerta pops that ultimate, and they focus on ZZQ. ZZQ with his dying breath, perhaps not dying, gets off a of Cogs, sets up the... Oh, Jira Jr. is able to blink away just before it. Now the Clive near, just like last team, fight. Monkushi's going to try and come in, but now he's battling up against the Blade Mail. Has to back away with this Whirlwind. Away from the Kunkka for now. Kunkka, now the Blade Mail is dead. 1W can it. go in and try and finish him off. A pin onto the Tiny. Yes, with the Ghost out, it's hard to be able to fight around that, but it seems like Team Zero are just running out of gas, and they are not able to keep this fight going. 7E, he will go down as well. They may have saved Erica's life, but it cost them so much more. It's another fight where Zero are so close to pulling out some big kills, but I mean, you do 9,000 damage compared to 10,000, but you're the one losing three for the one. Yeah. Damage is just getting split around a lot with these marches and AoE spells, and one dub, I mean, very clutch blink out from Tiny to dodge. That bow coming in, Shira Jr. really played that fight well. And they kind of kited out this, this Morta ulti, right? Like, it got some work done, but if anything, I felt like the callings were more impactful. They're really hard for one dub to fight into, particularly if you can lock heroes in things like the cogs, and then you're just getting permanently silenced. Cloud is just not the one getting targeted here, so this Brule yeah. is guaranteed going to go off at some point in this fight, and it's it's hard for Zero to commit in when they know this. Like, at some point, you're okay, maybe I hook shot him here, we can burst him. I don't even know if it would have done it. So tanky. Back in real time, where they have picked up both the supports, used the Whirlwind to uh, kill Pondo's Tinker, and now they've got CCQ as well, but... I think it is really just unfortunate that that last team fight, they smoke into Batrider and the Brewmaster, and it's the Batrider they see first, right? They, they see the uh, the Brewmaster first. I think they, they hookshot him, getting inside of Cogs. He's hit by calling over and over and over again. He just dies. That's what you're looking for. Now he has a pipe. So yeah, now I don't even know if he dies if you go on him with, you know, just... Up the haze on the magic resist, you're gonna have like 85% magic resist or something stupid. I don't think you're bursting him. Yeah, throw a uh, repel on there for another 60% magic resistance. And you know, we're talking about all this magic resistance they built in this lineup. Not fun for Morta. No. <laughs> These are not fun matchups. You can also just go into the, the evasion. Also very annoying for Morta. This is why this matchup just kind of sucks all the way around. Not much you can really do to deal with it. You just have to become so powerful that you punch through everything. If it, It's almost like you want him to go into the Brulings. So you can kill the Brulings. Yeah, which is why the panel was calling into question this Muerta pick in the first place. It didn't seem like a great Muerta game with the heroes that were shown. And then obviously the couple of counters that came out after that just makes it that much worse. I mean, let's be fair though. Uh-huh. I don't know if any game is going to look like a good worth a game on you know, like, <laughs> You kind of just have to believe in the hero and, and make it work with your line. It sounded to me like this is a carry that exists entirely in theory and <laughs> on paper <laughs> and never actually in actuality. Yeah, a little bit. There's a lot of theoretical dubs that apparently this hero can take and <laughs> no actual ones. I mean, it's because when you, when you look at her skills and you play the hero, you can see what it's capable of. Uh -huh. it, it's so powerful. 
Mm. And then you go in a fight, you get lasso and die. <laughs> yeah. All right, that was tough. Man. Or you get tossed up in the air and you're like, well, there goes my full ultimate. But it's Meanwhile, you're watching Wind Ranger Ranger run around with her, her whirlwind, killing half of your team. Okay, but I feel like you are... You're, you're taking some of the points away from style here. I mean, there's something to be said <laughs> for style. Yeah. Orta's got a lot of it. And we may have lost, boys. May have gotten 2-0 uh, eliminated out of TI, but at least we did it in style. It's, it's not over yet. Erica That's true. Is finding a lot of farm here. This is a good Gleipnir hero. Gives them even more control, more lockdown. If you can get some PKBs up, we didn't talk about it, but if you can get some debuff immunity or magic resistance first one dub. What a timing there for the Cogs. It uh, doesn't do anything to save ZZQ, but it does help his uh, carry get out of there. I feel like I've seen this before. Yeah. This is the same play game one, the, the 20 minute instant tormentor contest. Yeah, they're doing it without an Aegis, no. which is maybe cause for uh, more concern. Just a very heads up play. I think this is, it's one of those moves where it feels like anytime you can make it with directness, it, it w ends up working for you, you know? Yeah. Like, you're going to find somebody there in this 20 to 21 minute mark, and you're going to get a good reward if you don't. Team Zero just not ready to take the heads-on fight yet. They need this Mars BKB. They need more time for the Morita. In order to get those BKBs, they've got to rat out the map a little bit. Again, they've given up their Tormentor, but will find their Wisdom Rune uncontested. You have to think about how the map's getting split between this Tinker and Batrider. Both these four positions, they want to clear waves. They want to create some sort of pressure that forces the enemy team to respond to them. You're and doing a pretty good job of staying ahead of uh, yeah. 1W as they... But they are looking, looking out on the off. map. That's the concern here. This Tinker is not Omega Fat. The space is starting to close, and you're about to lose Roshan here. Really need the BKBs. You're going to have to make something happen with the Morta and the Mars BKB. And one dub are going to have an Aegis to play with here, and a very strong Brewmaster, man. Cloud has... He's just turned it up this series. He has yet to die, by the way, in either game. Very impressive. I don't know if he's going to die in this game. I, if he gets his Radiance, you're putting Evasion on top the magic resist on top of its HP, on top of the Omni Knight that can bail him out if you really need it. Problems mounting up for Team Zero. And all they can do is try and farm their way out of them. This 1W gets the Aegis on Monkushi, and we'll see what objectives they're able to take with this next five minutes. BKBs are coming in, though, for Team Zero. That's the farm that they need. BKBs, they get it on Mars, get it on uh, Erica here. Maybe, 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 maybe. I like the a friend of placement, you know. Yeah, I like Erica how... Uh, already planning, like, when he dies in the team fight, he can go straight <laughs> go back to the Ancients and just pick up where he left off. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, both facets are so bad that the best oh. one is using Ofrenda for, like, 20 attack speed or something. Caught the Tinker in action! This is why the Tinker has stayed behind an Omni Knight in net worth. Because he is just not able to uh, push these lanes like you would want him to. Just constantly in fear for his life off this Blink Dagger Tiny. Or oh, the Wind Ranger running you down. You're the one with the displacement, so you're not too afraid to just let the brute front line. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they did this last time, right? Yeah, bring him back. Try bring and back. bring them back. Team Zero. They don't well, want to come back. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, we're going to call your bluff here. But he's in a bluff. I mean, knock, knock. Anybody home? Apparently not. Okay, now, okay. Now the Mars is going to start coming back. The Torrent does land. So are they going to try and catch these heroes at all before they get out? I mean, even if they did, it's just well, a simple repel walk away. Yeah, that's the issue. The initiation's not easy. I think they made the correct call. Just farm the map as much as you can. You're, you're not defending that without the Tinker respawn anyway. Your one play was maybe to look for a spear back, but it's pretty scary going into Bat and Tiny, who can both just... Your Mars is dead on that initiation. <laughs> yeah, when they have repositioning tools and you blink into them, you're probably getting pulled all the way out to sea. But there's your BKB. We're at the BKB online. Your Mars one was finished earlier. Ideally, you would want to fight with this timing. It's a very powerful one for the Morita here. If Erica but can get in good position and just... Be that damage turret. What are you fighting for, though? There's no you're fighting big for objectives. Non-elimination. Ti Austin. <laughs> That's what you're fighting for. 
I just mean like what what's the point of fighting at this point in time? Can't you just like keep farming? Is like late game wise, you probably feel pretty good about Muerta, right? Like Muerta just gets stronger and stronger and stronger as time goes on. The level yeah, 20 you don't want to fight right now because they have Aegis and you're probably getting slapped outside of a really good position, but okay. I'm saying like this is one of those points in the game where you feel strong as that Muerta and you want to use it. But you can't. Yeah, it's oh. frustrating that you're not in a position to be able to. Oh, nice uh, hook shot, TP out. He's good, it. he's good, he's good. It's easy, Q will survive one of these moves. That's big, that's a lot of space. Yeah. That was five now euros. Committed a lasso as well. I mean, that's space for, for the Tinker and the Morta. To yeah, space for this four man to farm two camps together. Get out on the map. Yeah. Getting out there. Did get the Grove Bow as well. That's a big pickup here. Behind MKB. So that'll be his way to deal with the evasion on the Wind Ranger and the Brewmaster here. I kind of like it. It just feels absolutely necessary here, right? Yeah, level level 20 in MKB is where I think you can turn this game around. This is a deep dive. Could be a toss back. Fight. It's not going to go very far, just to the creep way. X marks on Chira Jr., pulling him back into the boat and the pin as well, overlapping their stunts a little bit. The arena walls do protect them, though. Really not much being done there from either side damage-wise, but I guess with abilities used, one win feel like, okay, that's good enough for us to hit this tier two. One W will keep their pressure up. Pierce the Veil committed is going to be down for 40 seconds. At least his ult isn't a massive cooldown. You didn't get what you were looking for. I mean, we've just seen over and over. It feels like one dub can go for these initiations, and even if they go wrong, they just walk it off. Like, there's no punish on a play like that. Yeah. It's a big deal. And that'll push the Brewmaster to his Radiance. More evasion to make this Morta's life miserable until you get to that MKB. Swing strong. Blink Dagger, Solar Crest. He's looking at a Boots of Travels now. So he knows I'm Team Zero have been trying to rat. I'm Luchka, I'm Luchka. We'll try and keep up with them. It's going to feel good in this game. Just being able to push lanes, still join the team, set up some, some easier catch on the Tinker. He's trying to get greedy on the map. Every little bit counts here. Again, you kind of want to play this split map style until you are ready to group for big objectives with Aegis timings. Lots helps. And the lead, still 10k here for one dub. Feeling comfortable in this game. Except for the big Mort that's for threat that is looming. Yes. The big <laughs> Muerta threat. You don't believe Austin. I can sense some doubt. <laughs> what do you mean sense? I was very clear from the start of this game. I feel that you don't believe in it. From the very first sentence I spoke. Some subtle hints of disbelief. <laughs> <laughs> 3 to 14, 9,000 net worth lead for 1W. And they have had a bit of a poke at the high ground. Just to keep Team Zero honest, but they're probably not really trying to crack open that high ground until the second Roshan, which does give us a window, perhaps, for Team Zero to get to the items, the prerequisites required. Hookshot used to try and get out of there. Couldn't get outside of the range of the Shackle Shot, though. ZZQ will not make it out this time around. Somebody's got to make the space. Somebody's got to die. Daedalus for the Wind Ranger. And they got. Only got three wisdom rooms. They got triple yeah, wisdom I mean, rooms. That's, that's how far ahead there. they are right now. Yeah, it's a big influx. <laughs> and this Daedalus, I feel like Daedalus is the big, it's the big point for this hero. This whirlwind with the crits is, well, it's just stupid. There's no other way to, to phrase it. It's just what? Stupid. Oh. I mean, it's an AOE attack spell that procs on every hit. The only other version of that that's ever existed in Dota, I think, was uh, Medusa talent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That is pretty stupid. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, it's the same with Lifesteal on this hero. Like, there's a lot of things that make this whirlwind in incredibly powerful in the late game. What do we got? Minute left until potential Roshan spawn time, so probably too, not too much that's going to be happening. Any other, like, items that you see that are coming up specifically for Team Zero that would give us uh, a little silver lining to this dark cloud that is 1W pushing into the high ground again? I mean, at this point in time, <laughs> 
Like, they're going to take this tier 3 just through chip damage. Tiny's coming in to finish it. It's very slow. I don't, they don't mind sieging, I guess. I mean, it's just the Morta items. Like, that's really the big difference. <laughs> Look here. at this Tiny's damage, man. You, Elena Barracks for nothing. No contest. Erica came back. This signals you have to get something out of it. I mean, this is even worse than no contest. This is yeah. pathetic contest that you don't have heroes on the map farming away during this period of time. I mean, you're going to have to, like, smoke out of here or something, contest the map, try and set the lanes up or get a team fight into next Roshan. Something on this trajectory. Refresher for 7e would be really big as well if you can get to it. Like, they're kind of close to some of these big items. Refresher Mars and MKB for Morta. You can win a team fight off that. It is a lot of control and damage. You're going to have Tinker just giving you the sustain in there as well. Yeah. A lot of it's how that team fight gets set up. If one dub can find good initiations with Lasso Toss, then a lot of that goes out the window. Right? But if you can avoid that, start the fight on your terms or just commit in on like a botched initiation or one where the hero doesn't just get all in. So all the pressure on 70, that's what I'm hearing from this. Is a this amount, smoke, yeah. he's got to get a good blink initiation. They're playing for Roshan. It's not up, and it won't be for quite some time. And there's the Vlads for the Omni Knight. This is the lifesteal for the Wind Ranger that I think is really nice to have, but if you can avoid having to buy Satanic yourself, just feels that much better. I like these support pickups here from one dub. Really respecting their one positions in both these games and playing around them, buffing up the damage, giving them all the sustain and the survivability they need and just letting them go to work when Kushi has been pampered, for lack of a better word. He really has. Nice use of the X there. 70 goes through the gate to push out the top lane without any fear of being caught in the process. 1W, now it's their turn to smoke up and try and assault Team Zero's positioning. Radiance off, no position given away. Scouting with the gem, going in blind, sweet and strong. CZQ jumps up to the high ground, sweet and strong, just trying to see what vision is available here. Meanwhile, Chira Jr. is immediately going to pop his BKB and get the toss back on his CZQ. Beyond, nice tidal wave in on Cloud, no follow up to it whatsoever. Team Zero are not even going to try for this apparently, but they are going to get grabbed on their attempted retreat. It's going to be Beyond. Gets pulled to the other side of the arena walls and left for dead. They want more here. How much more are they going to be able to get? Oh, what? That Gleitner animation. They had the net on the ground, but somehow doesn't catch the Tinker. He completes his TP. They get the BKB out of 7e. That's what I mean, they wanted. There goes your Roshan contest, if Roshan was up right now. A later Roshan means that perhaps Team Zero can still formulate a response, a defense of the pit. And the MKB is done, too. So That's level 20 it. MKB, we hit the timing that we said. Team Zero could turn the game around on. They have to be able to control heroes, though. It, it, every fight has just been one dub controlling oh my God, who's committed and who's not, this. who can get out of the fight, who's stuck there, and there's just no one for Erica to hit. Avery! It's not the level 20 timing. It's even worse! <laughs> yeah, it's the 15. It's the now. level 25 time. Oh well, my. it's gunslinger damage plus no chance. Yeah. You, I forgot about this. They pushed it back to level 25, so you have to choose between magic resistance or or gunslinger chance, which I assume everybody takes gunslinger chance. But it just yeah. means that the where to carry is like takes even longer to come up. With. Yeah, it takes a little bit. I mean, but I mean that's the beauty of it, Austin. It's the, <laughs> is it? It's the it's the journey. Yeah, it's the a glory. Long, it's a long uh, ass journey, man. Uh, yeah, it can can be. This is a long Roshan. Yeah. What? Well, I guess one win, uh, feeling like maybe Team Zero is going to contest, but they're they're not. So what yeah, up? This no is free for you. In contesting here, so this will be an Aegis to the Wind Ranger. Also finished in Ags. Yeah. And has an Omni Knight behind her. Whew. This is a tough carry for Team Zero to bring down right now. Lankushi is thriving. Yeah, that, I feel like. Uh, Wind Ranger carry is so obnoxious because of this, where it's like, oh, we finally have MKB to deal with Wind Run, but now you also need you need MKB and you need detection to be able to see her. There's just and you need BKB control. And you need BKB control. We've seen the lack of you know control through debuff immunity really hurting Team Zero in these fights, and one dub are playing well around it. They have BKBs on all their big heroes. They have the Omni Knight to bail out anybody who maybe gets gone on before that. 
We saw how long Cloud was holding the Brewmaster ultimate in that fight too, right? Yeah. No pressure on him. No fear of being bursted, which may play against him in this next team fight with the MKB up and the level 20 timing. Double dead shot, of course. Very important. Something. One dub. That is a value shield rune hero. Hey, we've seen bigger comebacks. By the way, Chira Jr., he just went for the burst build. This is Echo Conda plus Quiver. Some, somebody's going to die. <laughs> I don't know how else to phrase it. Somebody is going to get hit by this. And basically, you're just spamming that buyback button. Oh, that is the best target to find. Oh, but an X pullback off of the lasso. Good play from Beyond to be able to stop this initiation from 1W. And if they could kill the Brewmaster, the can it's they do it? Keep him inside the calling. Do the damage. Hookshot comes out. A little bit more, but no, there goes the repel. It was waiting the entire time. Respected zero pressure on him whatsoever. Oh, My tidal wave to try and get out. And Arena as well. A full retreat out. Can all of these heroes get away? Wait, they all what? made it out. Okay, maybe they couldn't win the fight, but they also only kind of lost it. Yeah? Only issue is you're going to get sieged now, and you're missing a lot of your big ultimates. And this whirlwind back up in six seconds here. Okay, but four more levels to go for level 25 more. So if you win a fight, you'll be there. Yeah. Almost. May not be true. Gotta wait for this Pierce the Veil. It is up. Oh, man, you wish you had the toss here or something. You have a spear back. They do have a spear back. A target that gets low. Deadshot doesn't actually bounce back to him. And boy, God damn that damage. There's some heroes dying out here, and the Muerta, yeah, one, one dumb say, I ain't afraid of no ghost. We ain't leaving. This Muerta's no threat. We're going to take this lane of barracks. We're going to take the second and third lane of barracks, and we're going to take Megas, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Team Zero are going to be eliminated by one W. A rough event for them. They had their highs, but ultimately, Unable to muster a good defense here in the lower bracket elimination game, but one dub starting to find some momentum. I think.